part of the structure of Friendaholic, in between those interviews, there are thematic chapters about social media, about what happens when you're ghosted. Um, and there were also what I call the friendship tapes, which were a tribute to one of my favorite films of all time, When Harry Met Sally, um, which is, I think, the greatest rom-com. And because I was looking at friendship and I was trying to give it the same respect as we've given romantic love, I thought like the greatest rom-com ever was a good place to start. And in that film, if you've seen it, you will know that there are, it's interspersed with real life couples and they're being interviewed about how they met and so the idea was to do the same with friendship and so I spoke to a number of individuals each of whom could represent something very different about friendship and who had a necessarily very different perspective on friendship from my own and and that I think gives the book uh, again more expansiveness that's my hope anyway mm, it really does how did you find them and how did you um, I hired them? an amazing researcher called Rosie, who's in the audience somewhere, Rosie. Sorry for the shout out. <laughs> um, and I basically, I had this wish list of the people that I wanted. So I wanted someone who could talk to queer friendships. I wanted someone who could talk to neurodivergent friendships and what that was like. I wanted someone who was older than I was, who was like in their 80s, who could talk to me about lifelong friendships, if there is such a thing. And that, that was how it happened. It was just I had this kind of wish list. And then one of them, is, my, is one of my honorary godchildren, Wilkie, who's 10 years old, and I just wanted to hear what he thought. <laughs> and he is an absolute slam dunk. He is I, uh, amazing. He's think... wiser than I am, definitely. You want to read his book on friendship, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're wasting your time here. <laughs> I hadn't really clocked when I was reading his tape that he was 10 for some reason, and then there was something about a lunch break or a packet of crisps, and I was like, no. <laughs> this is so... Oh, I was sort of moved. I was like, this, that's absolutely what it's about, is someone you can share yes. a packet of crisps with. Yes. And I was like, what a poet. Yes, exactly. And then I went back and he was 10, and I was like, what a 10-year-old poet. Oh, I know. But, um, yeah. Should you read that now? Shall I read that now? Just read that one okay. now. Yeah, that was going to be for the end. Yeah. But wait. Hey. <laughs> um, this is Wilkie Bobin. This is his friendship tape. He's 10 years old and he's a year six primary school student. I think it's important to have friends. I think life would be hard without them. For example, if you want somebody to get a packet of crisps because you can't be bothered, and <laughs> if you don't have anyone to call, that wouldn't be much help. But if you have a friend, you can go with them. Also, I think if you're really depressed, if you have friends, then hopefully they can comfort you. I'm good friends with my brother and sister, but you know they're always going to be there. They can't just run away. <laughs> and if they did run away, you'd go with them. <laughs> but with friends, they could move away or not like you anymore, things like that, so you'd have to put more effort in. My definition of a friend is someone that I look forward to seeing and someone that invites me over to their house and I invite them over to my house. <laughs> Having a friend is just, just there. That's just so perfect. Um, Having a friend is different from being friendly because you can be friendly to someone you don't like, but you can't be friends with someone you don't like. <laughs> I'm quite a person person. <laughs> <laughs> he is. At school, there are 56 in my year, and maybe 15 to 20 of them are my friends. Out of school, I probably have about 10. My parents have a lot of friends, so I don't have much choice but to be friends with their kids. <laughs> <laughs> I have probably about 20 adult friends. <laughs> so I like to stay in contact, because if you lose contact, you can't really see them anymore. I prefer seeing them in person or on FaceTime. My friends all have strengths and weaknesses. I know which friend to go to if I'm depressed or feeling active or chatty. I don't have a best friend because saying things like that often makes your other friends upset. <laughs> I have five best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then 10, I would say, mid friends. <laughs> who I'm not in the same class as, so I can only get to see them at break time and home time. Quite a lot of people get very jealous. I think I'm unique because I'm not jealous. I don't really mind if somebody starts not hanging out with me. I think girls and boys respond to friendship differently. In my opinion, and I'm trying not to be sexist, <laughs> he has a good mother. If boys fall out, they just shove each other and say, no, you did it, no, you did, no, you did it. 
until one of them says, yeah, OK, I did it. <laughs> and the other one goes, told you so. Then that's it. The girls in my school spend most of their break time and lunch time talking about friendship problems when they could just say soz and move on. <laughs> The five most important qualities I look for in a friend are kindness, the ability, be, the ability to be fine with me not playing with them, which I suppose is being chill, <laughs> not being too stubborn, and being quite open with ideas, being interesting, because it would be boring being friends with a boring person, <laughs> and being active. I would say an added bonus would be respect and a sense of humor. <laughs> Wilkie Bobin. <laughs>